Are you now, Griffin? Oh, I'm Somebody just going to wait for you to throw it my way because now it feels like you're playing games on your phone. You got games on your phone? Um, throw <laughs> throw it my way. Throw phone? it my way whenever you're ready. You know, you know what it is. Wait, which side am I on? You are <laughs> on my left side. So that does, that does affect it. So you need to. Throw well, you it. can throw it any sort of way. It'll like eventually make its way around the globe. He's got to go. Need to throw it like that way, right? Is that? So that's, are you to this side of me? No, that's that's on the farthest end from me. You're on the other side. Okay. Yeah. And now we wait. Wonder what ball it's going to be. Is it going to be a football? Is it going to be a soccer ball? Is it going to be a basketball? Is it going to be a bowling ball? I feel like it's going to be a bowling ball. Oh, it might be a baseball. He caught it. All right, guys. We're back. List night. Another episode. This week, we're going to be doing foods that make you emotional. Uh, We appreciate you guys tuning in for another episode. Uh, And we're going to be doing, for the order this week, Andrew, Thomas, and then myself. Uh, And Andrew, you know know how this works. We've been doing this for a few months now. Ready to get going whenever you want. Thomas already has a question. So, Andrew, I'm sorry, actually. Thomas is going to start with something, and then we'll get going with you. Thomas, you're raising your hand. What's up? I know it's early in our careers, and uh, people down the roads might be hearing this. but our passion uh, projects. And it was my idea. Um, I'm already tired of throwing it in the beginning. I'm going to be honest. It's very tiring for me. <laughs> um, okay. I think feels, we can cut it, it out. It feels forced. I agree. Like I, I agree. Love it. Honestly, this whole this whole podcast feels forced. forced. You guys forced. want to just shut it down? <laughs> it's just forced top to bottom. Here's the thing, though. I wanted to cut it out in week one, and then I wanted to cut it out again in week two, and then I'm pretty sure I made a comment about cutting it out in week three, and then yeah. week four or so, I made peace with the bit, and now what are we? Week six, week seven, and now you want to cut it out? I mean, no. See, see, see. We're on the same page because. When you were not into it, I was. The problem is there's you're some, now like throw it to me, and I'm there's like some some dicey context with that with that being yeah, how you feel about it. I'm you guys are never worried. on the same page. I'm just worried that you're looking at me like a father, and I I I can't handle that right now, man. No, I, I look at personal... I look at Kevin Dempsey as a father. I don't look at you as a father. You're like a mm-hmm. dumb little brother mm-hmm. that I wish my parents had put mm-hmm. up for adoption. Um, me and Kevin or Dempsey, m- made my close. grandparents take care of. I mean, Kevin Dempsey texts all the time. Whatever. <laughs> In a group chat with me. Okay, we're we're getting off Andrew, track. I'm sorry, Andrew. I'm sorry, Griffin is doing this. Um, you can get started whenever you want. We're getting it's off right. track. And Andrew, you know, I'm going to pass it to you because again, I'm the hostess with the most. It's not Thomas. Thomas isn't the hostess with the most. I'm the hostess with the most. Andrew, by all means, my friend, my companion. Look at the- I feel like going. at this point, the, the ball is the hostess of the most. It's the one that's been here consistently like and done the same thing every week. And, and he's, <laughs> you know, but anyways, okay, I digress. Uh, basically, basically, every food gets me emotional. I want to preface by saying that because... The fattest uh, thing you've ever said. Big, big food guy here. I, I feel like you guys should be agreeing with me on that. Oh, oh 100%, 100%. 100%, 100% okay. But I, I wouldn't okay. admit it on like yeah. recorded media. Okay. You just but, did. Yeah, so for that reason, I had to really, like, think deep about not just, like, my favorite foods, but, you know, having some connection that basically transports me to a place in time when I eat this food. Uh, Or, in some cases, I only get the food at a certain place in time, so I'm already feeling good when eating it. Um, All right, let's jump into it. Number five. Let's jump into it. Number five. Uh, I'm going to get this one out of the way early. You guys probably knew this was going to be on my list. It might be on your list too. Uh, cheeseburger sub from Billy's in Ocean City, Maryland. Okay. Um, we, I feel like our our friendship for the past decade has been defined by basically just beach trips uh, and talking about our next beach trips, uh, especially in the off season where we don't even go to the beach and we just go to uh, Griffin's family's condo and just basically play video games and eat billies the whole time. (laughs) Um, So I I feel like there's no greater food that, 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 um, that basically touches on the last basically 10, 12 years of my life than a cheeseburger sub from Billy's. It's basically what it sounds like. It's a cheeseburger in a sub roll. (laughs) Um, They throw on the the mayonnaise and make it about as unhealthy as it can possibly be. And it is glorious. Thanks for breaking down what a cheeseburger sub is for the people at home who don't know what either a cheeseburger is. You want to talk about like how they cook it 
or like what's involved in a cheeseburger or like what a sub roll is made out of. It's bread in case anyone was wondering. I surely don't, asshole. <laughs> so here's a couple things. Um, we spend more time talking about the beach trips and actually on the beach trips. Sure. Uh, second, yeah, I, that this is my issue with this list already. There's not much where I can get angry and disagree with you guys about because like I love food. I love Billy's cheeseburger sub one of my top two subs there like i it's top three i guess there's three i always like debate getting first and it's usually cheeseburger sub i will say i think the only food that will describe the beach trips more would be the fiery fingers from billy's instead <laughs> yeah uh i i thought about that but um but no, nothing, nothing, <laughs> nothing touches the soul like a uh, two foot long cheeseburger sub eaten <laughs> in one sitting and then followed up with like 35 beers. Uh, and then 35, like you're having a you're having a light weekend. Exactly. <laughs> the and next then, time uh, you so only have 35 beers is going to be the first time you only have 35 beers. Uh, first off. Second off, you know, I, I knew that a cheeseburger sub was going to be on your list. Uh, I would love to say that I wrote it down in my notepad, but I didn't. I just knew it was going to be there. Uh, I thought it was going to be your number one pick, if I'm being completely honest with you. Uh, so yeah, I, want, I wanted to get it out of the way early because I knew it was predictable. Yeah. Um, it, yeah. It's, it could be probably anywhere on my list, um, but I just – I threw it in for number five. It may move up on my list in, in, uh, in later years because I know that <laughs> the Ocean City trips may be – Sadly, coming to a close very soon, um, and then I will think of cheeseburger subs even more fondly uh, than I you do. Can, now. You can still go to Ocean you City. You can still go to Ocean City. You just can't go no. for free at my mom's condo. Um, no, can't. One thing that I do want to, you know, make a point of: there's some gamesmanship in that pick, considering how many of our friends uh, obsess over Billy's. The fact that when we release our number fives, you're probably going to get some b- votes right off the bat for having Billy's in your number five spot. There's some gamesmanship. You were you were thinking about winning. Yeah, I've so. learned I've learned since I put first day of school as my number five last week. <laughs> I guess uh, I guess Griffin doesn't have uh, Billy's any high on his list. I'm not saying um, that I don't. I'm just saying there's gamesmanship in his pick. I'm, I'm I'll just, be there in a while, my friend. Let's let's. I'm just saying I I bet coffee's on Griffin. Whatever. We're not getting that. What I hate. And I've done it. It's Griffin. What I hate hate the the most about this thing, and you too, mostly Griffin, and Andrew just said it, is this could be anywhere on my list. That's not how a list works. That is not how a list works. (laughs) I'm not going to pretend like I didn't spend copious amounts of time like crossing off and like reordering. Like I've put thought into it. Don't don't get me wrong. And I told you the reasons why it ended up at my number five. Um, but I don't know. It's I can't say that if I woke up a different day and was feeling differently, it wouldn't be higher. I don't know that for sure. Okay. I right. look, no, it's a it's it's a great, great top five pick. And and Thomas, I will tell you for this list, don't don't want to jump over to myself, but for this list, my top five is a top five. It is an order from my least favorite to my favorites from the top. So, you know, no pet peeves this week. But pet peeve go. list coming pretty soon. Maybe. So I will say, because I knew you guys wanted to ask, um, cheeseburger sub, the Italian sub there, which I only recently found in the last It's a years, recent discovery for great. me too. It's oh, great. it's so it's good. Great. So cheeseburger sub, Italian sub, the pepperoni pizza sub, and the cheese steak. So there's actually four that I debate every time, and I mm-hmm. usually get all four in the span of two days. Yep. Here's, so, yeah, uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna interrupt one more time before Andrew moves on no, to his Andrew, next pick. No, 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 you don't get hostess with the most. Uh, I'm gonna interrupt one more time and just point out that the f- three of us, I almost said the four of us, don't know who the fourth is. The three of us is doing Intern Matt. <laughs> an emotional food based list was the dumbest idea we could have had because we're ten minutes in and we've not even fully made it through his first pick because these foods get us actually genuinely emotional and we love them so much. Yeah, this might be like a three-hour long. Episode. This is gonna be this is gonna be food. the Snyder yeah. cut of list night episodes. I might get meat sweats just just talking about the meats. <laughs> you look like you've already got them. So I think you know, you audio are. only listeners, Summer. tune it's, into it's, YouTube. It's, it's, I'm just glistening. I'm pregnant. Go on. Okay. All right. Let's go. Um, my number four <laughs> is my only one on the list. Well, I guess you could argue my number five was. It's the only one that's like an actual uh, sentimental pick. Uh, and this this is like a a food that specifically my grandmother did make. Um, 
on my my dad's side of the family. Um, my my dad's side of the family is Lebanese, so I had to pick one Arabic food, and it's uh, grape leaves, stuffed grape leaves. Um, so good food. Good pick. this was this was always the thing that like my my grandmother had like in a big pot when we would come to the house to her house every week, and uh, always made them for family gatherings and everything. Uh, always have fond memories of it. And now my uncle still makes them anytime we get together. So this, this had to make my list. Uh, it's the only like really sentimental one. Like I said, my top three, not quite as much, uh, but this is a good pick. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I, I, I can't say anything bad about them. They're good. And it's obviously a connection for you. What I'm laughing at is that you said my dad's side is Lebanese. So I had to, as if it's like in the bylaws of being Lebanese that when you make a list of food, you know, <laughs> right. food has to be also, <laughs> also the fact that he called it a good pick after he said it, as if he gets to this be the determination on that. I get to decide that. And also, yeah, I had to cater specifically to my dad's side because my dad is the one of my two parents who always votes on list night every week. Oh, yeah. Great, great voter. Great <laughs> listener. Make sure that he messages me on Facebook every week uh, to tell me oh. what he likes and, and doesn't like about my list. Andrew came with strategy today, and I uh, think it's really dumb. Andrew, this it. is a uh, this this is uh, a, a good pick, knowing knowing your background and knowing that you are you know very very into the Arabic side of your background. Um, it is going to cause some strife in the Queen household because you were like, "Yo, I'm Lebanese, so I had to pick something Lebanese for my list." Uh, I'm Syrian, and I can assure you. There is nothing Syrian on my list. And so my mom is going to be like, can I adopt Andrew? Can he, can he be my son? So yep. I don't think she's going to vote for me this week. Yeah, this, this might get me Julia. This might get me. Uh, oh, mom, definitely going to so. get you, Julia. 100% going to get yeah. you, Julia. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So moving on, number three. So in my day job in the past few years, I've had the uh, great – pleasure of being able to try some really nice foods specifically steaks uh steaks and uh, seafood brag some more yeah, yeah shout no out to that deal. time that you were furloughed yeah <laughs> uh so i i, I will say I, I had to put the best probably best quality steak i've ever tried on this list uh the japanese a5 wagyu steak ribeye steak um, it is one of those foods that everyone talks about. Like it's, it's almost like an out of body experience. It's basically like eating beef flavored butter. Uh, it is amazing. Um, it's just the most tender thing you could think of and just basically melts in your mouth. You can only eat like a little bit of it. Uh, because yeah, beef, beef flavored butter well, sounds like it would do some damage. Like maybe yeah. not so great for the heart. It's no, it's no it, honey nut Cheerios. It, it does, but it is one of those things that's like, just unbelievably good. Yeah. Did you try to say um, but like try to make that sound like beef, or did I? Am I just hearing things? I think like, you're just um, hearing things. I think um, I think you're losing your goddamn mind. Also, I, uh, it's worth noting that for anybody watching the video podcast or anybody listening to the audio, Thomas, while Andrew was describing his food, turned off the video that he had in the background, and I've got to imagine that's because he was just so focused on the idea of beef flavored butter that he had to hone in entirely on what andrew was saying yeah. fattest thing i've ever seen a person do i'm kind of getting uh that's not true because i'm kind of getting flashbacks and not in like a traumatic way of fogo de chow oh man I'm like <laughs> in the best way possible the best the best day of your life was that fogo de chow uh, is it so i mean I, this i yeah you're the best steak you've ever had I, that's fair i mean yeah and this yeah. is the only food on my list that's like like luxury tier food. Most of, oh, most of yeah. the things when I think of something emotional are just, they're not like, you know, the best thing I've ever tasted in my life. But this one, this one did make a list. No, so this is the thing on your list where like, you look down at the peasants and you're like, here's my high quality steak and my yeah. subscription luxury uh, ice, ice cubes. cubes. Yeah. Would, would, you, would, you use your, <laughs> would you use your, your $1,400 stimmy payment to, to buy some of this steak? No, no. Too Thanks, overpriced. Timmy. <laughs> I'd rather what are you get, talking like, about? I'd rather get like 1,200 McDoubles. <laughs> that's a man after my own heart. And also, I hope that that's the correct math. We could get 1,200 <laughs> McDoubles. It used to be easy math when they were a dollar. Oh, yeah. You know. Fucking McDonald's. All right. I hope McDonald's <laughs> okay. is on your list, you fat sack of shit. Number, 
two. And it's on my, yours. <laughs> number two on my list is another food that I, the first time I had it, I had to sit down and just sit there and lay on my McRib. couch and it's just McRib. basically cry. Uh, no, not this is not, not an expected pick for me because I, I am a savory over sweet guy all day. But uh, Trader Joe's cookie butter ice cream, mm-hmm. it's, uh, it's the best. And yes, I just ranked it ahead of the most expensive steak in the world, basically. <laughs> it's like wait $4, but you know, it's, it's that good. Cookie butter? Cookie butter, yes. Yeah, I haven't had that, but I, as I chocolate chip either. cookie dough is my favorite ice cream, um, I'm in. I'm in. Hot, hot take for me, not a big Trader Joe's guy. Like I, I get the appeal, but every time I go there, I feel like I'm just like contributing to gentrification. So... <laughs> I uh, uh, I just I'm not a Trader Joe. They've got these like chocolate bars, these like big mound chocolate bars. Those things slap super hard. They got some good stuff, but not a yeah. I've never had I've never had their ice cream. I, you I, I you have it. a point, but uh, I am a big Trader Joe's guy. You love but gentrification. I, Everyone knows honestly, that. honestly, I don't know. There may be other cookie butter ice creams that are just as good or better, but I haven't I haven't seen them. I haven't tried them. As someone who hasn't been to Trader Joe's since I went with Andrew in Virginia to pick up beer and we found out they had mystery six packs, I'm okay with Trader Joe's. It's a really specific was, memory. Well, that was like six years ago. So it's a really specific time frame. Last time I was this must have been a big day for you. Yeah, you're a big Trader Joe's guy. You're a big Andrew guy. <laughs> I mean, th- this was this was the one. Uh, you know, for all the like sentimental, you know, pick and the you know the ones that you know, mean a lot to me because of the beach or whatever. Like this was the one that came to mind right away when we said foods that make you emotional, because I literally, I think got emotional after like taking the first bite of this. It was yeah. insane. And yet I it's not number one on the list. I think you just had a stomach ache. Honestly, it may have been, I was feeling ill or something. Yeah, it was, it could have been something bad. <laughs> make sure you don't pod while feeling ill. Okay. And now, uh, put that on a t-shirt. I will... <laughs> yeah, that's our first merch. Don't yeah, pod while filling eel. Why don't you, you say, say eel? Want Ill. Ill. <laughs> All right. My number one pick is uh, Maryland blue crabs. Yeah, that was this not is, surprising. Yeah, this this one's kind of uh, in line with uh, all my ma- minor holidays in uh, last week's episode were basically due to the fact that it was summer related. This is the same thing. It's just like it gets me emotional because it's just it's just – beach food, family food, you know, picking crabs, drinking beer, uh, getting Old Bay into the cuts on your fingers and uh, getting really hurt, you know, just gets you emotional in every way, good and bad. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So turn. that, that does. All right. I was, I, you lost me for a bit with the, uh, with the getting hurt part of it, but I guess that is, that is an emotion kind of ish. <laughs> kind of. Really. It's a feeling. I don't know if it's an yeah. emotion. Um, I I don't know what emotions are. Hey, I, clearly, clearly, I feel emotions every single day. You apparently do not. <laughs> every day, every day. Um, <laughs> did you vote? Did you vote for for Thomas for the most recent uh, list night? Because you know Maryland crab, your first one, Maryland day. I feel like you guys had a lot of like unison unity going there. Nope, nope. Voted for myself. Oh well, you should have voted for him. His was better than yours. Thank you, Griffin. That was nice. I would say who uh, who won, but we are still a couple at the time of this recording. We are a couple hours away from knowing who won, and it's a very close matchup. So we'll see. Um, if it if I didn't win, Thomas uses burners. Just putting it out there now. I totally get this pick because yeah, I mean, just <clears throat> think to the most recent recent crab feast we've had in the last couple of years, where we very much eat a lot of crabs take like an hour break when normal people would be like all right let's pack them and go home we're like bring the crabs back out yeah. is this the, uh, is this the sean another. taylor sean taylor crab feast <laughs> and the uh the middletown crab feast oh the middle town so we then we have it we have a history of doing that because i yes. recall vividly it's happened <laughs> the sun times. goes down and we get going we're like oh there's Again. an entire bushel left let's do it born yeah. for this yeah, that is an underrated part of an all-day crab feast is is telling the host to bring the crabs back out. Get them back the out of here. Us. Love a lukewarm crab. I don't know why you put those away. <laughs> Basically cold. Still here. 
Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, all right. So that's my list. Number five, a cheeseburger sub from Billy's Subs and Pizza in Ocean City, Maryland. Number four, uh, grape leaves. Number three, uh, or stuffed grape leaves. Number three, um, a Wagyu, Japanese Wagyu ribeye. Number two, Trader Joe's cookie butter ice cream. And number one, Maryland blue crabs. All over the place with that list. Rest of money bags with his Wagyu steak, it's Trader Joe's ice cream and crabs. Here's, yeah, let's be clear. I've never, I've never paid for a Japanese Wagyu steak on my own. Sure, sure. That's probably sure, for the best. Sure. Um, I imagine it would, it would do some damage. Uh, this is going to be one of those weeks, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy about this. You know, we, we've been pretty combative with each other recently. I don't see. I mean, I, we'll see how Thomas's list goes and how my list goes. I don't see us getting mad about any of these picks. I would happily eat everything on every one of these lists like it well, just yeah. sounds like a divine series of meals as someone who was a picky eater as a child i will try anything when yeah, it comes to food yeah 100 percent. i was i was the pickiest eater as a kid and now i will eat anything you put in front of me and yeah i don't really understand being a picky eater as an adult like there's just so much good food out there to try and like this goes back to my fear factor pick from a couple of episodes ago. Like, I'll try anything <laughs> once. Yeah, might not be huge, good. Huge bull testicle guy. Everyone knows that about you. I don't I think, know yet, but I would try it. I think you guys just gave me inspiration for a future uh, episode when we do do uh, pet peeves. <laughs> I, you I said do do. I know, I know, but <laughs> i i got an i got an idea for a pet peeve of mine. Picky. Thomas, is that what okay, you were spo- laughing about? Spoiler. Okay, all right. I'm good, good to see that this is pot is made up of just a group of four year olds. Okay, I mean, not a bad list, not a not a winning list. I'll say. I also don't believe it's a winning list, but it's it's yeah. definitely not a bad list. Um, so Thomas, all you man. Okay. Um. So when we first thought of this list idea, I was worried that I would be crying on screen with my picks. I figured it was a little too early in our professional careers to be crying on recordings. So I decided not to go too sentimental. There is, by accident, a theme to my list that I don't know if you guys will be able to pick out right away. But I'll explain it at the end if Bad. you can't figure it out. Ooh, it's like a bonus riddle. like for Exactly. The... Any riddle would be a bonus riddle. There's no riddle component to this podcast. Well, it's like it's like sometimes you do yeah. like, like a crossword puzzle and there's like a theme that is like a bonus like sure. question. What was the theme of this? You know, Thomas's it's brain kind of is the crossword puzzle of our friend group. That's 100% mm-hmm. true. You're right. I am smart. Anyway, we'll get started. I'm going to paint a picture. I got I got notes, guys. You apparently have a stack of notes. That's like Donald Trump writing policy. Just a big old thing. I'm not not the Trump of this group. You're right, Andrew is. Okay. Let me paint you a picture, guys. Paint us a picture. You work a little late at work, you know. You're getting home. It's dark out. You're tired. You're tired. There's no leftovers in your fridge. You don't have the energy to cook. You live in an area where delivery isn't easy or it's expensive. You don't have any frozen meals in your freezer because, like me, you're an adult who's getting into cooking. That's right, ladies. I cook. But not tonight because I'm tired. So what do I go for? I look in the freezer. What do I see? I see a delicious assortment of meat. Meat encased in a delectable, easy, convenient tube. That's right. I'm making hot dogs. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Not even remotely the direction I thought you were going in when this started. I thought you were going to say something like luxur- luxurious. Did they have to hot be frozen? Dogs. Did we have to go to the freezer for those? Could we have well, just gone yeah. to the fridge? Well, I mean, I mean you don't know when the last time you took sooner. them out was. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Gonna... Come on. Anyway. It doesn't so make that much five. money. You can't just let things go bad. Exactly. My number five is hot dogs after a long day where you don't feel like cooking because there's something so always delicious about a hot dog just always and if you don't like hot dogs griffin I, if that's what you're saying i don't want to hear it there's something about cooking a hot dog at the end of the day and it's just so peaceful i was uh, all right griffin yeah. you had your hand up go ahead <laughs> I, I do have my hand up uh specifically hot dogs after a long so hot dogs generally like 
wishy-washy, but like hot dogs after like a long work day when you've got nothing else to make in your house, that's that's your number one, just to be clear. Well, it's number five. Number five, excuse me. You're the first, yeah. first one you listed. Okay. But like, but because it reminds me of like being a child. I'm playing outside all day with my friends and you go into your house or their house and you're like, ma, whether it's your mom or their mom, you're like, ma, we're hungry. And they're like, we'll make hot dogs and mac and cheese, but hot dogs are the dish. Yeah, that it's is true. Good. You it's you just do good. just you yell at anyone's mom. You say, "Ma, <laughs> give me a hot dog." <laughs> Ma. Uh, yeah, like I, I mean, I, I like this pick. I think I would have liked it more without the story because. Oh, I feel like the story made it. it. I would like all of his picks more without the story. You you should. Um, I was gonna say you should write a recipe book as follow up to your uh, children's uh, baby's first curse word, word book that we wrote together. Mark, Still working on it. But I think you'd do better um, at, with like a, a cooking blo- uh, blog because it's all, don't you hate when you like look up a recipe online and it's like, you have to scroll down like eight miles to get past the story that they told just to find the, the ingredients in the recipe. That's basically what you did in audio <laughs> format just now. As someone who like, doesn't cook, God. that's like the only part of the recipe that I actually enjoy. No. I feel like Andrew just did a Seinfeld stand-up bit. But yeah, if I look up a recipe online, as soon as it's loading, I'm immediately scrolling. I'm on my phone just scrolling because I know I got to get to page five. Right. That's how I felt when uh, you were talking. I was like so doing good. this, but it wasn't felt working. You felt Thomas, I, I badly want you to start a uh, cooking and food blog. The only request that I'll make of you is to get a very, very good editor. Uh, because otherwise I just don't know if I'm going to be able to follow your illiterate ramblings. Oh God, no. You should see my journals. I don't know what they say anymore. <laughs> dark. Just a lot of images no, no, it's and like dark. It's post-it just... notes and cutouts mm-hmm. from magazines. Sometimes instead of writing, I just draw and I'm not good at drawing. Yeah. So number we four. believe you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> number four. You're at a sporting event, preferably outside. We'll say baseball. We'll say it's like Opening day, which is oh, not a holiday. Like stories for all of them. Sorry, um, <laughs> definitely not a holiday opening day. Definitely, <laughs> but it's not a great day. A holiday, definitely not a holiday. Anyway, you're at a sporting event. You don't want to buy it, but you have to buy it. It's expensive, but you got to get it. You're sitting at a baseball game. You have a beer in one hand. You have a hot dog in the other. <laughs> Having a hot dog at a baseball game, there's just something so right about it. So your theme yeah, is hot dogs, right? Amazing. Like, like, let's yeah, be clear. Really, is this, no, no, no. Your is this theme is hot, hot dog dogs? Again? No, no. Are no, you just no, hot no. dogging this entire list? <laughs> no. <laughs> Guys, they're not getting it. So my number four is a hot dog at a sporting event, preferably outside. <laughs> I um, I fully agree, preferably outside. Hot dog is better outside. That's a fact. Yeah. That's a fact. I mean, it just is. It just is. It just is. But yeah, so number four, and like I said, it's expensive as hell, and it's never worth the money. Like, the, if you pay that much for a hot dog anywhere else, you'd be upset. But doing it there, it's like, yeah, this is worth it. Oh, and honestly, it, it feels like, like you're ripping them amazing. off. Yeah, you're ripping them off because yeah. if you don't buy that hot dog, it gets to go home with them, I assume. I don't know if that's true. That's that's actually how they pay the concession stand. Hey, they just they give them hot dogs. Intern Matt, can you look it up? Thanks. Um, so yeah, four is hot dog at a sporting event. Nice. Yeah, I like it. Is uh is intern Matt your version of Joe Rogan asking Jamie to throw it up on the screen? Because Joe oh. Rogan has two hundred million dollars, and Andrew can't afford to buy decent steak. <laughs> No, he can't afford to buy the best steak. So you're right. The the best steak he's ever had that Which, tastes like butter or beef or something. I don't know. I don't remember. Yeah, Thomas can barely afford to buy a hot dog at a baseball game. So I don't think he the- can afford to buy a hot dog at a baseball game. He's very focused on the price. <laughs> I mean, just because I can't afford it doesn't mean I won't buy it. Thomas, we're gonna drop your Venmo. <laughs> oh no, in, yeah, uh, you're you would, in the you video. would take out a loan. <laughs> yeah, we'll, I have no we'll, doubt we'll that you would take out a loan to get a hot dog at a baseball game. All right. So, um, why are you laughing? Uh, because I agree that you would do that, and I find it funny because I also would do that. Number three, uh, paint you a picture with my words because Andrew's such a big fan of it. Um, you're camping, it's 
sun's going down Jesus almost Christ. all the way down. We're gonna fire you boys, your girls, maybe your families there. I don't know. Whatever your life is. You've been hiking all day. Maybe you just got there, so you're gonna set the camp up. That takes yeah. a lot out of you. I sure am hungry. So you go into the bag, you take See out your marshmallows. Anything. Yeah, yeah. Go take on. out your graham crackers, take out your chocolate, you get to the, the skewers, <laughs> slide those bad boys on there, and you cook yourself up a hot dog. <laughs> Sitting around a campfire, eating anything is magical, but eating a hot dog is just... Yeah, it's almost like there was plenty of campfire foods you could have gone with. <laughs> I will say, yeah, I mean, yeah, it gives it a nice smoky char. Uh, this is a... It's natural. Yeah. You talked about this list not making you cry. This list is making me cry. It's not a gas stove. You're not boiling it you're not microwaving it which is okay to do i don't care what anyone says you can microwave a hot dog yeah it's a poverty um, choice not... but it's a choice i mean at this point i'm just trying to break i'm trying to in it. my head be one step ahead of you and figure out what your number one and two are oh you're not gonna, uh, but i, I won't take i won't take away the joy it. of you you're, saying it you're really not gonna get it um but yeah, so my number three is a hot dog while camping um cool, cool. cooked over the fire by yourself i always why thought you were a spam guy I thought oh, you were a spam I, guy over no, uh, over campfire. No, no. See, I love spam, but like, no, over campfire. Nah, nah, nah. Give me that thing grilled and my scrambled eggs. Nah, chop, 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 chop. That's the sound of me chopping up uh, spam. <laughs> um, that that is, in fact, the sound of you chopping. I imagine that's not the sound that the knife makes. That's the sound that you make while you're chopping spam. Yeah, you say it. Yeah. Yeah. What you are guys, you doing if you're not making sound effects in your day to day life? When I journal, I say journal, 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 journal. Um, okay, I so my number don't. two. My number two is another callback to our minor holiday episode where Andrew said opening day, which is not a holiday, and I said Memorial Day, which is a minor holiday. I looked it up online. So the big thing about Memorial Day is being outside, <laughs> beers with the boys and the girls, and just having a good time by the pool or the beach or whatever. And maybe there's a grill. Actually, no, there's definitely a grill. There's got to be a grill. So you throw your burgers on the grill, maybe throw some hot dogs on the grill, some kielbasa, maybe some, you know, shish kebab. But the best thing... Or great foods grill, that you could choose from. The best thing you're going to grill that day is already on the grill. It's the hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> you pull off oh that. There's something, there's something about a hot dog in the spring outside Memorial Day weekend. Like... Maybe you're a broke college kid, so you guys can't. Aff- you spent all your money on the place you're staying at the beach, and then all, all you, all your money is either going to beer or food. So you get beer and hot dogs. Hot dogs are cheap. Boom, boom. You're gonna fucking win this week. You're fucking gonna win this. Here's the thing. I said before we got started off pod before the recording started. I said I don't know how I'm gonna make this week funny because we're just talking about foods that we love, and it's probably just gonna be like an emotional, heartwarming, delicious episode. This is the funniest Thomas has ever been, which you know says something about his performance on on previous pods. But also, like you're gonna win, and it's gonna be fucking insane because also, it's just I'm gonna, gonna be hot. I'm gonna come to times. I'm gonna come to Thomas's defense because are you claiming that this list is not heartwarming and delicious because I would yeah, definitely disagree with that. It's definitely thank heartwarming you, and it's definitely delicious. The amount so of hot dogs that he's consuming, it, it, it I don't know if it would continue to be delicious at this point. It would just be, you know, routine. You're he's making hot dogs routine for me. He's on back to back. This is like I just, on Friday I'm working late. So I mean, I based on dog. this order, it does feel like you're eating hot dogs 7 days a week. No, no. What if you Friday. had a what if you Friday, had a hard Friday. hard work day, hard work day, and then the next day was Memorial Day, and then you went to a baseball game, and then you went camping with your friends? That's four days straight to hot dog. No. And let's be honest, number five, or number one, probably going to be a hot dog. Here's the issue with you, um, <laughs> with me, that, not with my opinion, with but with you. me. Uh, Memorial Day is on a Monday. Who's camping on a Tuesday? Friday, I work late. I have hot dogs. Monday is Memorial Day. I have hot dogs. The Saturday after Friday, I worked hard before Memorial Day. I'm at a sporting event. I have hot dogs. Sunday, I'm camping. I have hot dogs. Monday's Memorial Day. That's the hot dog I already mentioned. <laughs> so again, you are having four straight days of hot dogs, just in a different order than I presented it as. You're like you're like Old Testament God. You hot dog six days in a row, and then you rest. Um, and I assume I you to... sleep in a bed of hot dogs. 
You and curl up like the meat young. inside of a hot dog. God, that'd be so cozy. Disgusting. So bef- before I get to number one, I will say an honorable mention. Number six was um, Lunchables. Oh. Yeah. The hot dog version. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. What are the odds? Um, you almost got us with that one. What's so, uh? What, what's what's? <laughs> I, what are your toppings of choice on a, your condiments of choice on a hot dog? And and like, are, are they all the same for all four of these? Or God no, no. God no, God no. Um, so post work, I mean, whatever condiments are in the fridge, not whatever condiments, but like something's going on with the hot dog. If I only have ketchup, it's just ketchup. If I have just mustard, just mustard. Both, both. Um, sporting event, that's going to be probably straight ketchup because the more you put on there. The more likely you're gonna get it on yourself, and I, I do that anyway. That's a that's a pro choice right there. Um, camping, probably just ketchup because you got to save room for all the hot dogs you're packing in the cooler. Um, Memorial Day, I'm having one with hot with uh, ketchup and mustard, and one with barbecue sauce because that's pretty good too. So, all hey, right. Griffin, do you like hot dogs? I, I I do love hot dogs. Barbecue you sauce like on a hot dog sauce. is not my do, not my go to. Yeah, like I agree with sauce. Why why is this just Griffin? Andrew's over here agreeing with me. No, yeah, yeah. Me. I'm I'm team mustard over ketchup, but uh eh, condiments I'm, will be I'm, another I'm, list for another day. Oh yeah, I'm team mustard and ketchup pretty much as often as possible. Uh and then you know if you can get some like jalapenos on that jout. Little seven eleven yeah. hot dog. I'm not huge on like physical toppings on my hot dogs. You just want to focus on the dog. Just want to focus on the dog. I respect that. You're um, a purist. Well, I'm not really a big relish guy in general, and like, you know, if, if someone put beans on it, like, I'm not gonna hate it. But like, like baked beans, but like, or chili, like, it, it, it's still good. I'm a bean, hot dog beans or there. chili on the side kind of guy. It's yeah, a, me it's too. A, it's a nice, nice follow along. But probably not with my hot dog because like that seems like. A good way to get fat. It's also a good way to fill up on things other than hot dogs, and then you'd be able to eat less hot dogs, and that would just be ridiculous. Yeah, why'd you say that? Like someone would want to do that. So on to my number one. Yeah, transport um, us one more time. Take us into that mind of yours. October. Griffin, I don't know where you are because you float like a butterfly. Andrew, you're outside. Arrowhead. Oof. You're about to go to the Chiefs game. You got there a couple hours early. You got a cooler of beer. You got a grill. You got some music playing. You're just hanging out. You're just drinking, having a good time. Like, what are you gonna put on that grill though? What can you what can you have in your car that's gonna stay good all day? That you're gonna then cook on the grill, clean up, eat, and then clean up easily so you can go into the game. Mm, like what? I, I don't know. Or, like I'll tell you because you don't know. You're dumb. Hot dogs. There is something about a hot dog at a tailgate that is just anything at a tailgate is better than not at a tailgate. And hot dogs are already great. So hot dogs are a tailgate. And like the thing with hot dogs is you get a pack of 12. You're with two buddies. You don't need 12. Could you eat 12 hot dogs? Yeah, obviously. Look at us. Do you need them? No. See someone walking by at a tailgate, they're like, "Man, that smells good." You're like, "Hey, dude, I got you." Oh, you Go share birds. your hot dogs. Go birds. I'm Go outside birds. the link. I'm oh, you link. you were the guy who wore the the shirt that uh, was themed for your list this week. Go birds. I'm outside the link. I'm sharing hot dogs. I'm eating hot dogs. I'm having the time of my life. Number one, hot dogs at a tailgate. Whew. I, uh, oh, he just dropped the pe- pencil, not the mic. I, al- the I already cannot wait to make the Instagram graphic of our reveals, our list reveals for your list. Uh, because uh, I'm not sure whether I'm going to I'm gonna say anything about the setting. I'm just going to put the food <laughs> there's a, there's five a, times in a row. <laughs> there's a gif, and I want to say it's of Olivia Munn, but it might be of somebody else, of a woman just getting a thousand hot dogs, just like bouncing off her face. That's oh, what yeah. I imagine all of Thomas's best fantasies are. Is well, being we the just got a Photoshop kid. idea. You started that with Olivia Munn, and I was like, oh, I like her. And then you finished it with getting hot dogs thrown in your face. And I was like, I don't want her. I want that. And no, Andrew, we're not going to Photoshop that. We're going to reenact that. Oh. Okay. 
okay. Preferably. I don't want to do that with you because I feel like at this you're point gonna have it's to get almost a fetish thing. But yeah, yeah, intern Matt will do that with you. He'll throw the hot dogs. Just so quick recap for those listening at home, in the car, at work, at baptism, at a barbecue, at a beach, at a tailgate, whatever it is. Uh, number one is a hot dog after a long day where you're too tired to cook. Uh, number two is a hot dog at a sporting event, preferably baseball because you're outside. You know, it's enjoyable. They just go hand in hand, you know, hot dog, hand. Um, <laughs> number three is a hot dog while camping around the campfire. You know, you make it yourself. So that's like an added bonus, you know, accomplishment. Uh, number two, hot dog during Memorial Day barbecues. I mean, you don't get better than the minor holiday of Memorial Day. You just don't. Um, number one is a hot dog at a tailgate. Preferably, you're sharing your hot dogs. Not like the same hot dog, but your extra hot dogs. <laughs> you're not Lady in the Tramp in it. Are you, having a, I mean, are you having a hot dog at this baptism? Or are, are baptisms, hot dogs, they're off the list? I mean, if I have kids and they get baptized, the food of choice will be pigs in the blanket so many hot dogs <laughs> wow i mean quality list can can we solve the riddle now yeah wait, i have oh, no yeah, idea yeah. what the theme was these I, are I really things that thomas eats no andrew hmm. you gotta guess um no really the things you eat outside I have no guess no nope. the things you put condiments uh, on <laughs> yes you're not even there are things that go in hot dog buns. The moral of the the moral of the story is, be kind to others. Oh, like a hot the dog. The theme of my list was hot dogs. Oh, you said okay, there was thought... a riddle, not a moral to the story. No, no, he didn't say riddle. I I was the one who twisted yeah. it to say riddle. He said there was a theme. Oh, I said there was a theme. This whole yeah. time I've been waiting for a riddle. Okay, all yeah. right. Well, Andrew always, really fucked me on that one. Oh, I mean, but I'm just I'm list. just confused because you said you took off the ones on your list that that were too sentimental and we're gonna make everyone cry. But I, I'm fighting back tears right I now. I shed you some said, tears during that, both you said, for your future heart disease and share your hot dogs. Yeah. See, when I said meat sweats earlier, I almost tripped myself up and said hot dog tears, but I saved myself. I was like, hot, meat sweats. I'm impressed so. with you for getting through that, like without bawling, because it was. It was beautiful. <laughs> Thomas, first thing you do when you get off the pod tonight. God, I'm going to be honest. I don't have hot dogs right now, but I think. <laughs> what a fraud. Does. What an absolute. Oh, your roommate does. You better start eating your roommate's food. Then this is the one time that it's justifiable. Ask if he wants to tailgate. <laughs> <laughs> or get ready for opening day. It's it's close. You could have some hey, pre, wanna, pre-opening day hot dogs. You want to tailgate work tomorrow? <laughs> I, know, I would respect it. If you do that, I, I expect to see a live stream. Of course, of course. Um, All right. So yeah, I guess that's it for tonight. Um, <laughs> thanks for listening, guys. Yeah, good list. Everyone. Are you are you about to sign off? Are you about to are you about to jump off? I'm the hostess with the mostest, Griffin. I swear, you've said that so many times tonight that if you don't have a hostess product on your list. I'm going to be furious that you've been I, setting that up all night. I can assure you that I don't have a hostess product on my list. Although, because, you know, if I'm going to have some sort of pastry-based product, I'm certainly not going to have uh, a a artificial one like a hostess product. I do have an honorable mention. Uh, and let's just jump into it. Let's, let's get going with my list. This one did not make my list um, because I don't think it's been part of my life long enough to really – really give me the emotional reaction that I've been looking for. It's a, it's a, it's a more recent thing. Uh, anybody that knows my mom or, you know, lives in the DMV area or has visited much like Thomas, uh, has probably had something from mama Q's mama Q's spinach feta scones are one of the greatest foods I've ever had in my life. And like the first, pretty much anytime I bite into them, I have a bit of an emotional reaction. Um, And if I'm ever high and I bite into them, I have a large emotional reaction. And it would not be reaching to say that I have probably cried over one before because of how good it was. Um, So if you are in the DMV and you have not had Mama Q's, get her spinach feta scones because they're the fucking bomb. So that's my honorable mention. I got not going to make myself live though. Yeah, Um, go for it. First off, Cindy, love you. Um, 
you're welcome for the free advertising because uh, your scones, her scones, Mama Q scones, out of this world. Out of this world. Even like a couple days traveling, you don't get to eat it on time. Maybe it's mailed to you out of this world. <laughs> Secondly, her granola has shaped my heart is so much. I don't know. I, I can't say that. I am healthier because her granola is so good that I actually eat granola and yogurt now. Hell yeah. Dude, it's we, so money. We also found a great way to just sneak, naturally sneak in our sponsor for this week, Mama Q's. <laughs> no, I can confirm that uh, the spinach feta, oh man. Yeah. It's another fruit I have to sit down to eat. So good. Oh, so good. I'm so glad you know that she started making them. They're, I never. I, my mom's always been an amazing cook and an amazing baker. Uh, and sh- in the past two years, she stepped her game up in a way that I never thought was possible. To go off something Andrew said, I'm surprised no one brought this up earlier about sit- something you need to sit down to eat. That's, um, I-, I don't think anyone's mentioned hot dogs yet, but one of the best <laughs> things about hot dogs is that you're able to stay active and eat it. Oh, they're on, on, they're on the go oh, food. A, yeah. It's like a yeah. one-handed food, yeah. I could I eat a hot dog home. with one hand and also catch the ball that Thomas is throwing my way to start the pod with the other, 100%. Or Ooh, something. I throw it way too fast if you ever catch it barehanded. Yeah, I, I would love I a hot dog. Fairways eating a hot dog, like you can, you can do whatever you want. I believe you. Yeah. Honestly, if you go for a hot dog, yeah. I could on after the spot. I might see if there's hot dogs. I could eat. All right, so uh, start your list. Yeah. Okay. Number five on my list. Let's get into it. Um, uh, number five on my list, uh, near and dear to my heart, is a bowl of pho with flank steak topping and just a metric load of sriracha sauce. Uh, you got to put so much sriracha sauce in it that the uh, broth turns like legitimate, I guess, orange red. Uh, but you you want it to look very different than when you first got it. Cold day, rainy day, post-workout, post-work, whatever it is, go get pho. Post-hangover, it's one of the greatest hangover foods on earth. Uh, that first bite and really pretty much the entire way through of a bowl of pho. It's just like a religious experience. It tastes so good. And then not even is the food so good, but within about 15 to 20 minutes of eating it, you get mad itis and you go home and you crush like the best naps of your life. So it cures hangovers. It fills you up with delicious food. And then you get to go home and you get to actually have like beautiful, peaceful sleep. There's nothing that fuck can't do. It's, it's, and it's still only my number five, but it's, it's amazing. Oh, wait, Griffin, I'm uncultured, isn't it, foe? <laughs> For anybody that does not pronounce it foe, it is spelled P-H-O, foe. Uh, and so that may be any, some confusion, but yeah, it's, it's, it's foe. And uh, if you're ever, no, you I, know, I... <laughs> uh, uh, on Shady Grove Road, go to Fun Nam, even though they probably have like a ton of health code violations, and uh, dig in. The place is amazing. No, I, I'm a, I'm, I'm very much with you, and I guess I was late to the game when everyone else was first into pho. Um but like, I, yeah, I love it. I mean, whatever that place is, we go in DC sometimes. Uh, big fan, big fan. I, yeah, I love it too. I am a pho alcoholic, um, <laughs> but uh, that's a weird word. Yeah, unbelievable. Um, sounds like you might just be a sex addict. <laughs> You hot uh, dog. Uh, yeah, no, I don't know. I don't know if I'd have it on my like. Emo- I don't know if I'd say it makes me emotional, but yeah, it is delicious. And I do the same thing where I just put like half a bottle of sriracha in it, and it is like if you have any like sinus issues or like clogged nose, and like I eat a bowl of pho, and there's like nothing left. No, you just feel better in in me. I just It'll cure feel you like, right up. Yeah, yeah. Guys, I think you could just drink sriracha and have that effect. Probably. I think I would uh, like that a lot less, though. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But just so you know, like, it's the sriracha doing that, right? Yeah. No, pho pho is definitely on on the short list. Not even of just foods that get me emotional, but foods that I just get, like, an insane craving for sometimes. Especially if it's, like, a cold, rainy day. It's, like, what would be perfect? Pho or, if you're in an area that has it, some, like, mean-ass ramen. But but it's a a top-tier food. All right. uh, Number four... On my list, unless Thomas has anything else you want. No, no. He looked like he had something. He didn't. He didn't have anything. Oh, um, I misread that. 
Hot dogs are good. Hot dogs Steamed are on. good. I would not put them in pho, though. No, but I put it in mac and cheese. Chop them up. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. That's a good choice. That's a good choice. Oh, right. man. Sorry. Go uh, on. Number four on my list is a uh, pulled pork barbecue sandwich with uh, Texas-style barbecue sauce. I know a lot of people you know, prefer Carolina barbecue sauce. Or I think there's a couple others, uh, the more like vinegar-based ones. I'm a Texas barbecue guy. Uh, there was a place growing up near my house. Uh, it used to be all ca- called O'Brien's, and then it was branded 72, and then it had a different name, and I'm pretty sure it's closed now, sadly. Best pulled pork I've ever had in my entire life, and I used to go there with my dad and, and my sister all the time. Uh, that's not why it makes me emotional. It makes me emotional because of how good it tastes, but I used to eat that stuff so often, and it definitely is going to contribute to my future heart disease, and I'm, I'm fine with that. That is not something I'll be emotional about. Yeah, love love a pulled pork sandwich. Um, I think I do fall in the category of being more of a vinegar based uh, barbecue type person, whether it's Carolina style or Kansas City style. But uh, you know, to each their own. There's no wrong choices. Um, There's no wrong choices when it comes to barbecue sauce. Yeah, I uh, I've been uh, dabbling in barbecue making barbecue sauces. Now, let me just tell you, it's fun. Um, because they're just good. Oh, little Sorry, uh, little um, uh, little big dicking over there. Little casual brag. Can you guys hear the dinging from these messages? Yeah, are you getting messages? No, yeah, I heard like one. It's on my, but not it's really. on my computer, and I'm trying to shut them off because they're pissing me off. No, I could barely like hear very it. Faintly. Yeah, All very right, faintly. We can move on. We don't even have to cut this. We'll leave this. This is just fun behind the scenes. Yeah, fun you know, behind we're, the we're scenes. What's people, going on? Dude. We're real people. We have lives. It's, it's a production movie. every single week. Yeah, people are texting us. You guys think that, that our popularity shuts off while we're doing the pod? I'm arguably more popular during the pod. I get so many texts, and then I get off this, and then no one responds to me. I don't understand. It's like they know when I'm busy. I have to record yeah. from an undisclosed location that I can't tell anybody so that uh, <laughs> nobody follows me. Is that why you waved to someone earlier? Uh, yeah, that was the security <laughs> guard. That was that was your security guard. Was it was it intern Matt's like cousin or Just something? To keep, to are we are we employing the their entire out. family? <laughs> oh god. Oh man. Uh, number three on my list. This one actually got mentioned earlier, but it didn't make didn't make a list. Uh, number three on my list is Fiery Fingers from Billy's 140th Street in Ocean City. And I think this was probably an expected one to make my list. Uh, this is a first purchase every time we go to uh, to the beach. Uh, Andrew really dove in in depth to uh, to beach trips and, and what they mean to our group of friends and, and <clears throat> the drinking and the debauchery, really not that much debauchery, and really the eating. The eating is a big part of it. <laughs> Uh, and 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 truly, the thing that I look forward to most about these beach trips is uh, the food. And and when it comes down to it, you know, Billy's is probably not the best sub shop on earth, and they do not have the best food, and they're kind of overpriced. But there's this nostalgic. Guy. Oh yeah, necklace guy. Uh, I'm a big big earring and bracelet guy. He he's he's the man. Necklace guy sucks. Uh, Agree. There's just so much nostalgia and like expectation knowing that you're going to get to the beach and you're going to get some fiery fingers, uh, even knowing that they're probably going to wreck my insides in conjunction with somewhere between one and two 30 packs of Bud Light, that it's just, it's just, it's like so tied to how I feel about Ocean City. I feel like I feel about fiery fingers and Billy's in general, the way a lot of people feel about like Maryland crabs. It's just the beach to me. Uh, I, I, yeah, I, I yeah. am almost drooling thinking about them right now. I can't wait to be back at the beach so I can get some. Yeah, anything from Billy's, super emotional food. There was nothing better than doing a late night drive to the beach. And like, let's say Billy closed at 1 a.m. that night, getting there at like 1245 and making it in time to yeah. uh, place the fire. Thing. You call, <laughs> you, you call, you call when you're 15 minutes you out call, and you, you say, Hey, ahead. are you guys you staying up, ahead. staying up until one? And they're like, yeah, of course we are. We need to make money. We're a sub shop <laughs> in the midst of a pandemic. Or also we tr- often traveled there during the off season because we go right. to the beach in the winter more than anyone. And you can step out of the car after a three hour drive. And the first smell you smell is ocean air. And the second smell you smell is Billy's air, both equally just 
amazing smells. And, and you know, where we are in proximity to Billy, sometimes Billy's air overpowers ocean air. It has a oh, scent to it. And I, I, I crave the scent. Place is the bomb. Yeah, um, I mean, to me, as someone who didn't grow up going to Ocean City, like I didn't start growing until I was, um, I'd go Kevin's family. And we get Billy said like two or three times in the weekend or the week, whatever. And then whenever we go, I'm getting it three or four times on a weekend, which like is disgusting to think about of getting the same things. Cause I just get a different sub each time. But yeah, when I first get there, I'm getting a sub. I'm getting fiery fingers. The fiery fingers are probably my either late night or my breakfast. <laughs> then I go to 7-Eleven and get a naked drink to make myself feel healthy. Oh, yeah. Because I know in, in three hours, I'm getting Billy's again. <laughs> yeah, and you're also going to wake up hungover and naked. Naked's going to help. Um, naked's going to help. In, in a group of friends that is contentious about literally everything, which is you know what led to List Night initially, the one thing that we're pretty much always unified on is how much we love Billy's. It's a lot. It's, it's everything to us. It's not a hot dog, yep. but it's, it's, it's everything. God, do they, they have hot They wow. do have hot dogs. I've they never do have had hot, dogs. A hot dog at Billy's. They do have hot so dogs. Here's my They've thing. also got a bomb um, ass uh, sausage sub. Not to get off track. Other than like a great American hot dogs and like sporting events, I don't enjoy buying hot dogs at places because like oh, restaurant. You, you like, like you like to you like to cook your own hot dogs. Because I don't know if I mentioned this, but like being at a tailgate with a grill and making hot dogs is the best. The, the, the thing about buying hot dogs when you go somewhere is, you know, oftentimes they're on like a kid's menu. And also oftentimes it's like a hot dog, a hot dog, like as much as we love them and we do love them. They're not an expensive food, but because it's on the menu, they'll be like eight fifty for a hot dog. And it's like, you're just yeah. kicking me in the dick. Like, what are you doing? Except at Costco. You should get, Except oh yeah, but that's true. Um, although I, I hate to say it and I think we've talked about it. Costco hot dogs have let me down a little bit over the past couple of years. I think at some point they either changed it or did they stop using Nathan's? I don't Wait, know. Are you they okay? Used... I just yeah, I don't know. I th- we've we've definitely talked about it. Costco hot dogs were not what they used to be, and and it might be maybe I burned out on them. Maybe I had too many Costco hot dogs. But when it comes down to it, I'm more of a chicken bake guy, anyways. Hey man, if if we need to talk, we can we can stop yeah, this we're, pod right we're, now. Like, we're here. For yeah, everybody. we'll we'll I mean, we'll, you... we'll talk about it off pod. Don't worry. Don't worry. I mean, I'm I'm pretty busy, so like we can't talk long. But like, oh, not right now. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. we'll get around. We'll go to Costco and we'll dive into it. I haven't had a Costco hot dog in a long time, to be fair. But yeah, another reason hot dogs are great. Um, but Billy's, yeah, I love Billy's. (laughs) Another reason hot dogs are great. Let's 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 circle back to hot dogs. I might vote for Thomas this week. This might be the week. Uh. Hot dogs are like universal in the Jesus. toppings that you can put on them. You mentioned God a minute ago, and I'd completely forgotten about God. Greatest American hot dogs. They had like ninety six different kinds of hot dogs and toppings on their menu. The fact that that yeah. place is not the most popular restaurant on earth, and I'm pretty sure is closed. It's just heartbreaking. Probably. Yeah, it says a lot about humanity's priorities, and you know. Yeah, how, how, you know, I think we were their best customers, and we went like once every like two months. So. But I think it goes with the fact that people don't buy hot dogs because, like you said, like even there, it's a ton of toppings and their prices weren't crazy. But mo- like a place like Five Guys, yeah, yeah it's well, expensive I think people, to buy a hot dog. I think people as as little faith in their own cooking abilities as they might have, they they have the feeling like right, I can cook a hot. You dog. can make a cook. Like, you can, can make a hot dog. <laughs> Another I, point I for hot dogs. It. You can just eat it. Yeah, you can yeah. just eat it. Oh, I can't wait to do a list of hot dogs that we love the most. Um, I um, might just write that in my journal. Someone already did that. <laughs> <laughs> no, like flavors of hot dogs. But yeah, I guess I guess like you brands hot dogs. <laughs> no, like you hot dogs expect? with like jumbo crab on them, or like hot dogs with like mac and cheese oh. on them. You like like how yeah, God so does. Like, no, you're talking like it could be like a hot dog after work, or like a hot dog at a baseball game, or <laughs> sure, a hot sure, dog sure. camping, or a hot dog Memorial Day, or a hot dog at a TV. Yeah, don't tell me that the right, five right, hot dogs right. that Thomas listed do not each have a distinct flavor. Because they do they have absolutely... a distinct flavor. All right, all right, all right, okay. Um, Just as a reminder, guys, we are on Griffin's list, and hot dogs is not on it. <laughs> we have covered the past 10 minutes for hot – we've talked about hot dogs a lot. It, it's – at this point, we're going to become just a hot dog centric podcast, and I'm willing to pivot into it. Like I'm, 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 I'm ready for it. 
<laughs> number uh, two on my list. Three? Two. No, that was that was my number three. The fiery fingers are my number three. Yeah. Yeah. Bola no, pho, you're, you're pork right. barbecue, fiery fingers. Barbecue. barbecue. Yeah, you forgot right, about the barbecue. Two. What are you doing, man? Uh number yeah, two I'm on my list. Hot dogs. I guess so, so were we all. Uh and I imagine all of our twelve listeners were too. Um <laughs> make sure to share this podcast with your friends so that we can dive into hot dogs more often. <laughs> number two on my list, a pepperoni jumbo slice. Uh, from Duccini's in Adams Morgan, D.C. Uh, Duccini's is the best pizza place in D.C. for my money. Uh, Jumbo Slice is the best way to get pizza for my money. Uh, the pepperoni, just a simple simple Jumbo Slice with pepperoni on it, is the ideal way to get Jumbo Slice. Anybody that says cheese, uh, fucking barstool guy, cheese is the only way to eat it. You're a loser. Matt. Uh, Matt also. Matt also. Uh, you know, is a cheese guy. Again, a point against cheese. Uh, it's insanely unhel- unhealthy. It's insanely delicious. A lot of people think that Jumbo Slice is just a drunk food. Those people are wrong. Those people are stupid. And I hate those people. Jumbo Slice is an every time food and you can eat it whenever you want. Um, and it like, it's, it's just, it does genuinely get me emotional because it's like a, it's a food that's tied to my DC experience. And I know it's one of those foods that no longer being in DC, it's going to be something that I crave all the time. Um, and I, I can't wait to come back to DC and have some jumbo slice, maybe, you know, get a jumbo slice and have a hot dog after. I don't know. Who's to say we um, are unhealthy people. Oh God. Yeah. This is what, an unhealthy topic. Salads. Yeah. Yeah. Salads get me um, emotional because they make me depressed. As someone who has never lived in DC, Duccini's was definitely mostly a drunk food, but I definitely had it sober a couple times. It's a great pizza. I mean, don't get me wrong, and it it is an amazing drunk. It's one of the best drunk. Oh, foods. it's a top tier drunk but, food. I mean, yeah. it's not my favorite pizza, but yeah, it's good pizza. And as someone who doesn't live in DC, like I'll send you some. It's great, and I know like why it gets you emotional, Griffin. I know it. Uh, you know, you have all all the memories of living down the street from there and everything. And I also, uh, I can relate to having that place where everyone calls it drunk food and you like stand up for it. And you're like, what are you talking about? Like I would eat this stone cold and do eat this stone cold sober all the time. And it's like, it's really offensive when people do that to like one of your favorite places. It, it diminishes like, the yeah. food. Cause it's like, this food is good all the time. Is it healthy all the time? <laughs> no. So I get from that perspective, like why it's drunk food, because you're like, normally I wouldn't think to get this. But from a taste right, it's my decision making. It's that always I, delicious. Right. So what's what's your what's your like food that Romeo's. people say is a drunk food? What's that? What's your food that people say is a drunk food that you love so much? Uh, honestly, like I was kind of thinking jumbo slice too. Like I remember um, in college in College Park there was like Pizza Mart where it was jumbo slice, and I would absolutely eat it so one hundred percent. I don't think anybody else would, but I would. <laughs> Um, no, 100%. Mine would be uh, Romeo's fat sandwiches, which I know oh, for yeah. a fact Andrew and I have eaten sober, and it is demoralizing and disgusting to yeah. eat sober. But I Romeo's, would do it again. That was Romeo's the best the part of visiting Thomas at Salisbury. Salisbury. Was going to see, yeah, 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 yeah Salisbury. Yeah, getting fat sandwiches. That was the best part. And uh, I, I remember very specific. That's honestly probably the best example of it because we we like met up with your friends that night and we were like, I think talking about how we got Romeo's. And everyone was like, you got Romeo's like midday, like sober before yeah. drinking. And we're like, yeah, yeah, we did. But like, I don't, I don't feel great right now, but it was delicious. It's understandable why people thought that, but we did it. Yeah. I mean, if this list has taught anything to anybody listening, we don't make the healthiest choices and we stand by every single one of those choices. I would not take back any of the foods I've eaten that may be drunk food, but no, they're delicious all the time. Uh, and with that, let's go into my number one, not commonly considered a drunk food. Uh, the number one for my list of foods that get me emotional is an everything bagel with lox, cream cheese and sliced tomatoes. Um, and it gets a little bit of extra points if it's at a Cindy queen brunch if my mom's hosting brunch and she's serving it, uh, if there was ever a food that just gave me like a feeling of like home, it's an everything bagel with lox and cream cheese and a slice of tomato on it. Like it's just the definitive 
brunch food for me. It's the definitive. I'm at home food. My mom always gets the best locks. She always gets the best bagels. Um, funnily enough, my mom makes – not funnily enough, but coincidentally enough, my mom makes these – amazing huge spreads for brunch and i think both of you guys have probably been there before for for one of her brunches maybe not thomas because he's been out of town for so long but at some point he will be there she makes these massive spreads and pretty much the only thing she doesn't make from scratch for the brunch is is the bagel and cream cheese and lox and all that those are those are things that she buys everything else she makes uh, and everything else is absolutely delicious but i've just always been a huge like bagel and lox kind of guy um it, and you want it, your, you want to you want to shovel over there, um, because you're just talking about how your favorite thing and the thing that makes you most emotional is the one thing that she doesn't make homemade. So I can give you a shovel. No, I I hey, oh, look wait. look I I, I gave her dap for the spinach feta. I, so I gave I, the thing she doesn't cook is, so, is wait, my number is, one. Is this is this the same Cindy Queen of Mama Q's? Of the it is the same Cindy Queen of Mama Q's. Mama yeah, Q's. yeah. The oh, woman can do no wrong oh. when it comes to food. Like she she is. Whether whether it's making the food or just putting the spread together, she kills it top to bottom. Um, and she raised you better. I I hope that one of the first things I do once I move is find a good bagel place because a good bagel place is not as common as it would seem. Like it's a very East Coast bagel places are fucking fantastic. Back when I lived in Arizona, there were no good bagel places, and so I'm tentatively hopeful for 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 california hopefully they've got better options um open one yeah uh probably not but you know we'll see how the podcast does and what kind of money i got coming if i got joe rogan money coming in i'm i'm opening a a, a deli let's do it right yeah how's the how's is there a jewish population in your new neighborhood i mean yeah that's key getting that bagel place i mean la la in general you know has a decent jewish population um, and that, yeah that is that's like i always say that i'm jewish pretty much the only way that my Judaism comes out is, is how it relates it's in the form to, of bagels. It's in the form of bagels. I love a fucking bagel. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, this pick, I, I can't argue with it. It honestly catches me off guard. Just some of your, based off your other picks. Like I felt like we were building to worse and worse for you. And then you threw in uh bagel, cream cheese, and, or everything bagel, cream cheese. Yeah. Lock. Yeah. I don't normally get it myself. Because I like my bagels either really plain, like just butter or just cream cheese, or like bacon, egg, and cheese. Sure. But like, it's delicious, and I totally get it. Yeah. Love a breakfast yeah. sandwich, it's but a, a, a bagel with lox for my money is the uh, the prime example of of bagel bagel meals. This is a good pick. I also like all the um, the hype recently around everything bagel seasoning. I feel like it's been added to everything in the past like two years um, doesn't that diminish it i'm here for it yeah i'm not i'm not mad about it i i feel like it we we go cyclically through stuff like that where they were putting like old bay on everything um or any number of other other things it was like it's just on everything um but yeah old uh, everything seasoning is 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 dope and it, it's again much like fiery fingers taste like the beach uh, bagels and locks it just tastes like home and it's a genuine emotional pick it's not a hot dog which also will get me emotional in, in other ways but love a bagel with locks and cream and it's funny it's funny you mentioned hot dogs it Those is funny that i mentioned hot dogs no one's talking about hot dogs today great <laughs> um right, so give us your recap your wide yeah. range list i call it I think there's some, there's there's some variety to this list. Um, it's not the same meal done at different locations and different times of the year. Uh, number five is a, a bowl of pho with uh, flank steak and sriracha sauce. Uh, number four, and and there's that is an important part of mine. A lot of mine involves like very specific toppings. Uh, number four is pulled pork barbecue with Texas style barbecue sauce. Number three is fiery fingers from Billy Subs uh, with blue cheese. I might not have noted that before. Uh, number two is a pepperoni jumbo slice from uh, Duccini's and Adams Morgan. And number one, the most emotional, most emotional food on my list, the food that gets me the most emotional, is an everything bagel with lox, cream cheese, and sliced tomatoes. Yep. See, and that's it. I just, I don't think food actually gets me that emotional. I just, like, I just love food. Food might be the only is love thing that not gets an me emotion? emotion. No, but like yeah. I'm saying, like I'm not like like specific food doesn't like bring out other emotions other than 
get inside me. Let me eat you. I am hungry. I, I think there's a, there's or a I'm happiness to, to like thinking about like your favorite foods. Like, like the expectation that you get from like knowing that a good food is like right around the corner. Chef's kiss. It's the best, best feeling. I changed yeah. my mind because I just thought about ketchup say. chips and I got sad inside that I can't find them anymore. We'll find some. Yeah, for this you, list was, was, or the, this whole this whole episode was very good for me. This is fantastic. I, as expected, I enjoyed all fifteen of our picks. Every one of them. Yeah. There was not like, a bad like thing on the list. Like I said at the very beginning, I I knew it was going to be good. Like I get emotional to basically any food. Um, so, yeah. Last good job. Last week, around. last we week food. we wanted people to uh, uh, abstain from voting because of how bad we felt our lists were. When it really came down to it, this week I want people to abstain from voting because it means picking one of these lists over the other, and there's not a wrong choice on these lists. Uh, <laughs> Thomas looks um, incredulous, and I do think I'm Thomas is going to win, but I think Thomas if, is going to win too. If this you vote for week. me, I will give you a hot dog at a tailgate. Hmm. You can't Man. promise that. The ball. We have listeners all over the world. You may the be spending potentially dozens of dollars. Is in your court. <laughs> all right. Good list, guys. Um, as right always, up. yeah. Let's wrap it up. Um, as always, you know, another. This this is I think one of the 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 most united we've ever been on our lists. Not a lot of uh, contention for these. Um, make sure that you, if you're watching on YouTube, you like, comment, and subscribe. If you're on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or any other podcast app, you follow us. Uh, and if you are able to, rate and review us uh, and share us with your friends. You know, we're, we do these, we do videos every Wednesday. Uh, we're dropping content pretty regularly. We feel pretty good about it. Hopefully you guys are enjoying it too. And uh, we appreciate anything that uh, you guys decide to share. Hey, also share us with your enemies. Like, if you don't like the show and you want to torture them, share it to them. Not just even friends, better. Share everyone. it with your enemies. If it's somebody really rates us point. a one star out of five, whatever, it's a rating. I'm into it. Please don't rate us one star, though. Please you could don't. You don't could rate that. us lower if you like. <laughs> All right, guys. You don't get Great. to rate me. Great list. I'm a five star man. <laughs>